Dear students, let us continue from where we left in the last class. Let us look at question 32. Integral minus 2 pi to 2 pi sin power 5x takes. See, whenever we come across integral minus a to a above x takes, the immediate thing that we need to do, we need to do is check whether this above x is odd function or even. So, because if it is an odd function, then directly we can write this answer as 0. And if it is an even function, then you can write this as 2 into integral 0 to a f of x takes. Now look at sin power 5x. Sin x is an odd function and sin power 5x, since the power is odd, it is also an odd function. Okay. So, the answer is 0. Next. Integral 0 to 2 step x takes. 0 to 2 step x takes. Here you should know one formula that is integral 0 to n step x takes is equal to n into n minus 1 by 2 if n is a natural number. Here in this case n is equal to 2, so that will give you 2 into 1 by 2 that is equal to 1. First option. If you know this formula, this is what we do. If you are if your question is sorry, if I don't know the formula, then what should I do? Then what you can do is write 0 to 2 as 0 to 1 plus 1 to 2 step x takes. Okay? Between 0 to 1, step x is defined as 0. When x is between 0 and 1, step x will be equal to 0, so the integral is 0. And when x is between 1 and 2, step x value is equal to 1. Now if you integrate it, we get x from 1 to 2, apply that it, we get 2 minus 1, that is equal to 1. So, first option. Okay, let us look at question 34. The area of the region bounded by the curve y is equal to sin x between the ordinates x equal to 0 and x equal to pi by 2 is. Area of the region bounded by the curve y equal to sin x. This is the graph of sin x. Between the ordinates x equal to 0, x equal to 0 is nothing but y axis and the line x equal to pi by 2. X equal to pi by 2 is. So, this is x equal to 0. This is what you have to find. You have to find the area of this. Okay? Area of this region is equal to integral 0 to pi by 2. 0 to pi by 2. F of x takes. F of x is sin x. That is equal to minus cos x from 0 to pi by 2. That will give you minus of cos pi by 2 minus cos 0. Cos pi by 2 is 0, cos 0 is 1, answer is plus 4000. Next, 35th question. If m and n are order and degree of this differential equation, then what is m and n? Okay. We are asked to find out what is the order and degree of this differential equation. Okay. So the given differential equation is d square y by dx square plus d square y by dx square whole cube divided by d cube y by dx cube plus d cube y by dx cube is equal to x square minus 1. This is the differential equation. If you want to find the degree of the differential equation, we have to ensure that all the derivatives are having the integral powers, are having the natural number as the power. So, I multiply this equation by d cube y by dx cube. So, if I multiply by d cube y by dx cube, we are going to get d square y by dx square into d cube y by dx cube plus d square y by dx square whole cube plus d cube y by dx cube whole square is equal to x square minus 1 into d cube y by dx. Now we observe the highest order derivative is 3, therefore order is 3. And the power of the highest order derivative is 2. So order is 3, degree is 2, which means second option is the correct answer. Okay. Next, 36th question. Integrating factor of this differential equation is integrating factor of the differential equation. Different linear, it must be a linear differential equation, which means it should be of the form dy by dx plus dy equal to q, where p and q are either constants or functions of x only. 
So in order to bring it to that form, I will divide this equation by 1 plus x square. When we divide by 1 plus x square, we are going to get dy by dx plus 2x divided by 1 plus x square into y is equal to 4x square divided by 1 plus x square. Okay. So this is of the form dy by dx plus py is equal to q. P is equal to 2x by 1 plus x square. We are asked to find the integrating factor which is equal to e power integral of p dx. e power integral of p, p is 2x by 1 plus x square into dx. So e power f integral of, observe this, 2x by 1 plus x square which is of the form f dash of x by f of x. Integral of f dash of x by f of x dx is equal to log f of x. So e power log 1 plus x square e power log 1 plus x square is equal to 1 plus x square which means third option is the right answer. Okay, then a line takes an angle alpha beta gamma with the x, y and z axis. Then what is sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus sin square gamma? As we know that if a line makes an angle alpha beta gamma with the coordinate axis, then cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to 1. You know this result. It's a very well known fact that if alpha beta gamma are the angles made by a line with the coordinate axis, then cos square alpha plus cos square beta plus cos square gamma is equal to 1. So now I have to ask my note sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus sin square gamma. What I do is I write uh, cos square alpha as uh, 1 minus sin square alpha. Cos square beta is 1 minus sin square beta and the cos square gamma is 1 minus sin square gamma. 1 plus 1 plus 1 that is 3 minus of uh, sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus sin square gamma is equal to 1. Now bring this one to LHS and take this factor to RHS. So that will give us sin square alpha plus sin square beta plus sin square gamma is equal to 2. Second option. Okay, look at the eighth question now. The value of 1 plus i whole power 6 plus 1 minus i whole power 6 is 1 plus i whole power 6 plus 1 minus i whole power 6. What I do is I write this as 1 plus i whole square whole cube. Similarly here 1 minus i whole square whole cube. Okay? 1 plus i whole square. When I expand it, we are going to get 1 square which is 1. Plus i square which is minus 1. Plus 2 a beta is 2 i whole cube. Plus. This will give you 1 plus i square that is minus 1. Minus 2 a that is minus 2 i whole cube. 1 1 gets cancelled. 2 i whole cube. That will give you 8i plus here 1 1 gets cancelled minus 2i whole cube that will give you minus 8i cube 8i cube minus 8i cube answer is 0 first option 39th question if a is equal to 2 minus x 2 2 b is uh, 2 2 minus y 2 and c is uh, 2 Minus Z. D is 1, 1, 1. Are coplanar. These four points are coplanar. Then what happens? See, these four points are coplanar. A, B, C, D. Four points are coplanar. Means the three vectors joining those four points, they are also coplanar. So I can say that the vectors A, B bar, E, A, C bar, and A, D bar. These three are, these three vectors are coplanar. If the vectors, three vectors are coplanar, then we know that their scalar triple product or the box product is equal to 0. So I can say that the box product of a b bar, a z bar, a d bar is equal to 0. Okay. So box product of this, a b bar, a b bar is nothing but o b bar minus o a bar. So if I write the 2 minus x 2, 2, that if those are the coordinates of a, then the position vector of a will be that is O A bar will be equal to 2 minus x into i plus 2j plus 2k. 
that will push vector, right? So now I want the AB bar, which means the determinant. The AB bar is nothing but OB bar minus OA bar. This is a pattern. 2 minus of 2 minus x, that will give you x. Then uh, 2 minus y minus 2, which is minus y. 2 minus 2, that is 0. Then AC bar. AC bar is nothing but OC bar minus OA bar. 2 minus of 2 minus x, which is x. Then 2 minus 2 is 0. Then 2 minus z minus 2 will give you minus z. Then AC bar, sorry, AD bar. AD bar is nothing but OD minus OA. 1 minus 2, 1 minus 2 minus x. 1 minus of 2 minus x, that will give you minus 1 plus x, or I can write x minus 1. Then 1 minus 2, which is minus 1. Then 1 minus 2 is minus 1. This must be equal to 0. Simplify this. x into 0 minus z plus y into AC bar is OC minus OA. 2 minus of 2 minus x is x. Okay. Okay. Plus uh, y into minus x. Here we get uh, plus x z minus z is equal to 0. So minus zx minus xy plus xyz minus yz is equal to 0. So from this I can write uh, x, y, z is equal to taking these three terms to RHS. We get x, y plus y, z plus z, x. I divide this equation by x, y, z. When I divide by x, y, z, we are going to get 1 is equal to 1 by z plus 1 by x plus 1 by y. In other words, 1 by x plus 1 by y plus 1 by z equal to 1. Second option. Okay. Look at question 14. The ratio in which y z plane divides the line segment joining minus 3, 4, 2 and 2, 1, 3 is. Yes. The ratio in which y z plane divides the line joining x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 is. the direct formula that is minus x1 is to x2. Okay? The formula is minus x1 is to x2. If it is yz plane, the ratio is minus x1 is to x2. So what do we get now? Minus of minus 3, that is 3. 3 is to 2. Second option. That's the answer. See, here in this question, it is given as yz plane. If the question is xz plane, the ratio in which xz plane divides the line joining x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 is Z plane, then the ratio is minus y1 is to y2. And if it is zx plane, I'm oh sorry, z plane or zx plane, what I will say. Or if it is xy plane, then the answer is minus z1 is to z2. Then the ratio is minus z1 is to z2. Remember, x1, y1, z1 and x2, y2, z2 are two points. The ratio with which yz plane divides the line joining those two is minus x1 is to x2. The ratio with which xz plane divides them is minus y1 is to y2. The ratio with which xy plane divides is minus z1 is to z2. Remember this. Now in this case we have to use this formula. Answer is 3 is to 2. Next question. The shortest distance of ABC from x axis. Okay. Shortest distance is nothing but the perpendicular distance. So from A, B, C, if I draw a perpendicular to x axis, the foot of the perpendicular will be A, 0, 0. Because it's a point on x axis, it's y and z coordinates will be 0. So find the distance between these two points, which is nothing but root of b square plus c square. Second option. The angle between the planes, angle between these two planes is. Okay. So, the first plane in Cartesian form, if I write, I am going to get 2x minus 3y plus z is 
equal to 1. The second player is x minus y is equal to 4. Okay? Angle between the two players. I take the direction ratios of the normal to the first plane as a1, b1, c1 to the second plane as a a2, b2, c2. So this represents the direction ratios of the normal to the plane. So for the first plane, a1, b1, c1 I take, it will be 2 minus 3, 1. For the second plane, it will be 1 minus 1, c1. We know the formula cos theta is equal to a1, a2 plus b1, b2 plus c1, c2 divided by square root of a1 square plus b1 square plus c1 square into root of a2 square plus b2 square plus c2 square. This formula you have to remember. This is the formula we use to find the angle between two lines also, angle between two planes also. But if the question is to find the angle between a line and a plane, then instead of cos theta, I will write sin theta, which we discussed in our uh, uh, earlier class. Okay? So now, uh, I will use this formula, cos theta is equal to a1 a2, 2 into 1, 2, b1 b2, plus 3, plus 0, divided by root of 4 plus 9 plus 1, into root of 1 plus 1, 5 by, this will give you root 14 and into 2, root 28, cos theta is equal to 5 by root 28, hence theta is equal to, Cos inverse of 5 by root 28. Cos inverse of 5 by root 28. Second option. Okay. Forty third question. The direction cosines of the normal to this plane are direction cosines of the normal. Direction ratios. See, the equation of the plane is 2x minus y plus 2z plus 5 is equal to 0. The direction ratios of the normal are 2 minus 1, 2. We are asked to find the direction cosines. From direction ratios, how do we get the direction cosines? You divide it by its length. Length is, if I call this as ABC, length means length of it from the origin. So ABC uh, is one point, A comma B comma C. Its distance from the origin is root of A square plus B square plus C square. So you divide it by root a square plus b square plus a square. a is 2, b is minus 1, c is 2. So a square is 4, b square is 1 and c square is 4. Where sum is equal to 9, root 9 which is equal to 3. So you divide this by 3, you get 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3, 2 by 3. These are the direction for sides. 2 by 3 minus 1 by 3 and 2 by 3. Fourth option. Then. The events A and B are independent. If P of A dash equal to 2 by 3 and P of B dash equal to equal to 2 by 7. So here there are P of A dash equal to 2 by 3 and P of B dash equal to 2 by 7. If P of A dash is 2 by 3, immediately we can write P of A is equal to 1 by 3. And P of B dash is 2 by 7, so P of B is equal to 5 by 7. We want the P of A intersection B. See, it is given that A and B are independent events. When A and B are independent, P of A intersection B is equal to P of A into P of B. That is equal to 1 by 3 into 5 by 7. This will give you 5 by 21. Second option. Okay. Then, 45th question. Box A contains two black and three red balls, while box B contains three black and four red balls. Out of these two boxes, one is selected at random, and the probability of choosing box A is double that of uh, box B. If a red ball is drawn from the selected box, then the probability that it has come from box B. When you look at such question, you immediately know that. Uh, what do you know? You know that you should skip the question? No. You know that uh, we have to use base theorem. Okay. okay? So there are two boxes. So box A, which consists of uh, two black and three red ones. Then box B. From box B, in box B, there are three black and four red ones. Okay? 
out of these two boxes one is selected as right i will say let the even be the event that box a is selected okay and let e2 be the event that box b is selected Now what they have done? Given that the probability of choosing box A is double that of B, that means probability of E1 is double that of E2. P of E1 is equal to two into P of E2. Okay. Sum of these two, P of E1 plus P of E2 must be equal to one because there are only two boxes and you have to select one of them. So sum of their probabilities must be equal to one. So P of E1 I will substitute 2 into P of E2 plus P of E2 equal to 1. So 3 into P of E2 equal to 1. And therefore P of E2 is equal to 1 by 2. And hence P of E1 is 1 by 2 by 3. P of E2 is 1 by 3. So P of E1 is 2 by 3. Okay. Then I will say let R be the event that the red ball is selected. Let R be the event that the red ball is selected. Oh, so this event has already occurred. There are two boxes, box A and B. Among the those two boxes, one of those two boxes is selected at random, of course, with some probability they are given. After that, from that box, from the selected box, one ball is selected. That ball is found to be red. Okay. Now the question is, that means we have already selected red ball. Now the question is, what is the probability that this red ball has come from? Second box, it has come from box B. Okay, so it has already occurred, which means we need to find out probability of E2 by R. R has already occurred. What is the probability that it has come from the second box? That's what we want. P of E2 by R by using Bayes' theorem. Okay, I just wrote this. Uh, P of E2 by R. Okay, so. Now what we know is that uh, p of e one three is equal to two by three. P of e two is equal to one by three. From uh, base theorem, p of e two by r is equal to p of e two into p of r by divided by p of e one. P of R by E plus P of E two into P of R by E. Okay. So we need to know what is P of R by E one and P of R by E. P of R by E one. R by E one means probability that the red ball is selected given that box A is selected. Even the event E one has already occurred. So this we have already selected box A. From that box one ball is selected. What is the probability that this red? So there are five, five boxes in this. Among them, two black and three red. One box is selected. What is the probability that one ball is selected? Sorry. What is the probability that it is red? So it is three by five. Then probability of R by E two. Probability of R by E two means probability that the red ball is selected. Given that E two is selected. Given that E two is selected. That means. Already we have selected the second box. Box B we have already selected. From that box, what is the probability that the red ball is selected? Okay. So in this there are four red and three black balls. One ball is selected. What is the probability that it is red? So it is four by seven. Now use all of this here. P of E two one by three into four by seven divided by two by three into three by five plus one by three. Four by seven. Let us simplify this. I'll take one by three as common factor here and cancel it. So that uh, we will have four by seven divided by one by three. I have taken out. So two into three. Six by five is there, and here four by seven. So four by seven divided by three is there. Thirty-five is there. Same here. Five seven is there. Seven is six forty-two plus twenty. Seven is there. Seven is there. Five is there. Twenty divided by forty-two plus twenty. Sixty-two, or I can write as ten by thirty-one. Second option. Forty-six question.
3 plus 5 plus 7 not to n terms. Why is the question? Put n equal to 1. n equal to 1 means I have to consider the first term here. First term is 3. So put n equal to 1 in the options. First option n into n plus 2. 1 into 1 plus 2. That will give you 3. May be the answer. Second option will give you 1 plus 1, 2 square, 4. That's not the correct answer. Third option will give you 1 square which is 1. That's not the correct answer. And fourth option will give you n into n minus 2. That means it will give you 1 into 1 minus 2. That will be equal to minus 1. That's not the answer. Therefore, first option is the answer. That you can do. Or else, uh, it's a high school level question. It's an AP. Some n terms of an AP, you know, Sn is equal to n by 2 into 2a plus uh, n minus 1 into d. Use that formula. 47th question. The probability of drawing an honor card from a well shepherd pack of 52 playing cards is K, Q, J, and A. J, Q, K, and K. The pitcher cards and the A together are called honor cards. So, in the one suit that, that out of 13 there will be four uh, honor cards which means uh, among all four suits uh, total there are 13 uh, 4 into 4 16 honor cards so probability of selecting an honor card is 16 divided by the total number of cards uh, 52 that's equal to 4 by 13 4 by 13 third option is the right answer then the probability is 0.02 that an item produced by a factory is defective. A shipment of 10,000 items is sent to warehouse. The expected number of defective items is expected number of defective items. You will find out uh, the mean here, expectation of this. Okay. Say this is a binomial distribution because n is 10,000 which is even and when you select an item, there are only two possibilities. Either it is working well or it is defective. Okay, so there are only two possible outcomes. So they form a binomial distribution. Right? So here n is equal to 10,000. P is the probability of success. Success means selecting a defective item is success here. 0.02. So Q will be equal to 0 0.9010, which is not necessary actually for this problem. The expectation of uh, yes, expected number of or mean mu mean or it's also called as expectation of x in a binomial distribution is equal to n p table this one n p mean is equal to n p variance is equal to n p q and standard deviation is equal to square root of n p. Now we are asked to find the expectation or the mean is equal to n into p. n is 10,000 into p. p is 0.02. I can write as 2 by 100. So 100 into 2. 200 is the answer. Third option. 49th question. The corner points of the feasible region are determined by the system of lines. System of linear constraints are 0, 10, 5, 5, 15, 15, 0, 20. Let z is equal to px plus qy where p and q are positive. Condition on p and q so that the maximum of z occurs at both the points 15, 15 and 0, 20. Okay. So they have given an objective function and they have also given the corner points. Those four are the corner points. Not only that, it is also given that the function, this objective function is maximum at these two points. Okay. Z attains its maximum at 15, 15 and 0, 20. At these two points, it attains its maximum that much value. Okay? Z is equal to what? Px plus Q1. Z attains its maximum at these two points. Then what is the relation between P and Q? That is the question. Okay. So, now substitute. Z at the 15, 15, it attains its maximum. So, if I substitute x as 15 and y as 15, we get 15 a plus 15 q. Z also attains its maximum at 0, 20. Substitute that also. 0 plus 20 q. So, 15 p is equal to 5 q, which means 3 p is equal to q, or q is equal to 3 p, fourth option. Okay. 
the value of x plus two. The value of c in the Rolle's theorem for the function f of x equal to x cube minus three x in the zero comma two. Okay. Look here. Actually, for Rolle's theorem, first we have to check whether it is continuous in the closed interval, differentiable in the open interval, f of a is equal to f of b. All those things you need to check. But now that uh, this question you are answering in C, you need not do all those things. Directly go for f dash of C is equal to C. Find out f dash of x. That is equal to 3x square minus 3. So f dash of C is equal to 3c square minus 3. This must be equal to zero. So 3c square equal to 3c square equal to 1. C is equal to plus or minus 1. Unfortunately, both the options are present, which invariably happens. But you know that the C should lie in the open interval. So it should lie in this interval, zero comma two. So which one will lie in this interval? Only plus one will lie in that interval. So plus one is the answer. Minus one does not lie in that interval. Then this first option is the answer. Okay. Fifty first question. The reflection of the point four comma minus thirteen about the line five x plus y plus six equal to zero is. The point is four comma minus thirteen. The line is five x plus y plus six is equal to zero. Reflection of four comma minus thirteen about this line. Okay, there is a formula which is very similar to finding the reflection of a point in three D geometry. I explained one question in our uh, uh, previous uh, test, in the grand test one. There was one question: finding the reflection of a point with respect to a plane that was in three D geometry. Here we are finding the reflection of a point with respect to a line, and the formula is very similar: x one y and uh, a x plus b y plus c is equal to zero. This is one point and this is one line. We are asked to find the image or the reflection of this point with respect to this line. Let alpha comma beta be the reflection. Then the formula is alpha minus x1 by a is equal to beta minus y1 by b. There you must remember that we had gamma minus z1 by c. Now that is not there. This is equal to minus 2 into ax1 plus by1 plus c. Divided by a square plus b. Just this one. So here x one is four comma minus thirteen. A is five. A is one. C is six. Okay. So alpha minus x one. X one is four. By a, a is five. Is equal to beta minus y one minus one minus one. That by b. That's four one. This is equal to minus two into a x one. Five into four. Twenty. B y one minus thirteen plus six divided by a square plus b square. Five square twenty five plus b square. There is one square. This one. So here if I simplify twenty minus thirteen seven plus six thirteen into two twenty six by twenty six gets cancelled minus one. Alpha minus four by five is equal to minus. So alpha minus four equal to minus five. Alpha is equal to minus one. Okay. So alpha is minus one only in this option. So that's the right answer. You need not find out the y coordinate. Now I know just for your reference, but in the exam, uh, don't waste your time in doing all these things. Okay. So from here, beta plus thirteen by one. So beta plus thirteen is equal to R H S after simplification become minus one. So beta is equal to minus four. Which means minus one comma minus fourteen is the answer. So if the question is reflection, this is what you, this is the formula you have to use. If the question is find the foot of the perpendicular, then remove this two. This will give you the foot of the perpendicular. Next, if E is the eccentricity of the hyperbola, x square by a square minus y square by b square is equal to one. Then what is the formula? So when you look at this formula, you will know, all the formula looks very simple. Okay. So then, what you do? You know what is eccentricity for a what is this hyperbola? For a hyperbola, eccentricity is given by root of one plus b square by h. For ellipse, it is root of one minus b square by h square. Square this unit a square is equal to a square plus b square by h square. Take this. Cross multiply a square a square is equal to a square plus b square. 
So B square is equal to A square into B e square minus one. Four thousand. If you can you know, directly remember this formula. Next question. Standard deviation of for the first ten natural numbers. Standard deviation for the first n natural numbers. Remember this formula. Root of n square minus one by two. This will give you the standard deviation of the first n natural numbers. Okay. So now first ten natural numbers. Root of ten square is hundred minus one by two. That's equal to root of ninety nine by two. Thirty-three by two. Sorry, thirty-three by four. Okay, thirty-three by four is uh, four eight are thirty-two. Eight point two five. Eight point two five. Root of eight point two five clearly less than three because root nine is three. So root point root of eight point two five is close to three but less than. Three. But close to three less than three means these two are eliminated. Answer is either two point nine seven or two point eight. Two point nine seven is very close to, but eight point two five is not very close to nine. So answer must be two point eight seven with some approximation. Two point eight seven is the right answer. Fifty fourth question. If n c twelve is equal to n c eight, n c twelve is equal to n c eight, then n is equal. To. Okay. Here yeah, n is equal to twenty. Because you know this formula, n c r is equal to n c n minus r. So if I take n as twenty, twenty c twelve will be equal to twenty c a. Fifty fifth question. Modulus of x plus three is greater than or equal to ten. Then where does x lie? Modulus of x plus three is greater than or equal to ten. This is greater than or equal to 10 means x plus 3 is either less than or equal to minus 10 or x plus 3 is greater than or equal to 10. Okay. So when x plus 3 is less than or equal to minus 10 means x is less than or equal to minus 10 or x is greater than or equal to 7, which means x should belong to minus infinity to minus 30, including minus 30. So close interval union seven to infinity, which means four thousand. Option D is the correct answer. The domain of the function f defined by f of x is equal to one by root of x minus mod x. Okay. Domain means a set of all possible values of x so that the function is well defined. Now let us put some values for x and see what happens. If I put x as one, then what happens? One minus one, you get zero. One by zero, not defined. So at the one, the function is not defined. One is it there in R? Yes, set of all real numbers one is there. So that option is eliminated. R plus means set of all positive reals. There one is there, and at one it is not defined. So that option is also eliminated. Look at R minus. R minus possible. So. Either third option or fourth option is the answer. Now put something else. You take a negative here. I'll take minus two. Minus two. If I substitute, I am getting minus two minus modulus of minus two. Modulus of minus two is two. So minus two minus two will get minus four. One by root of minus four. Root of minus four is not a real number. Okay. Hence, you cannot substitute the any positive real or any negative. Okay. So therefore, the domain of this function is uh, null set. According to the given options, none of these is true. Then, if u is equal to sine inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square, and v is equal to tan inverse of 2x by 1 minus x square, then du by dp. U is equal to sine inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square. V is equal to tan inverse of 2x divided by 1 minus x square. Okay. Now observe sine sine inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square. This is nothing but 2 times x square. And this is also equal to 2 times. So we are asked to find out du by d, which means the derivative of u with respect to b. 
derivative of xl with respect to x is 1. So, derivative of uh, now u is equal to a, derivative of u with respect to u only we are asking, which is equal to 1, 4000. Then, let f of x will mod sin x, then f is differential everywhere. f is everywhere continuous but not differential at x equal to m by where m below is the same. F is everywhere, everywhere continuous but not differentiable at x equal to n plus 1 by 2 pi. None of this. Okay. You know the graph of sin x. First, you draw the graph of sin x. Then I tell you how to draw the graph of mod sin x. Okay. This is the graph of sin x, right? So I want the graph of mod sin x. So whenever you want the graph of mod sin x, first you draw the graph of sin x. Then take the image of the curve that lies below x axis. Take its image with respect to x axis. So, whatever the portion of the curve that lies below x axis, no? you take it above. Okay. This is a graph of mod sin x. Not just for mod sin x, for any graph modulus of f of x. Whenever you want to draw the graph of mod f of x, what you need to do is first you draw the graph of f of x. After that, if there is any portion of the curve which lies below x axis, take its image with respect to x axis, take it above. Okay? Then this is a graph of mod f of x. Now observe that uh, this function is continuous everywhere and it has some uh, some sharp edges. You know, at all the points where there are sharp edges, the function is not differential. So this is 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. So at all these points, it is continuous, but continuous everywhere. At these points, it is not differentiable. So, 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, etc. That is nothing but n pi, which means second option. If it is mod cos x, then third option will be the correct The area of the parallelogram whose adjacent sides are j plus k and 2y plus j plus k. Adjacent sides are everywhere. So I will call it as a bar and b bar. a bar is equal to j plus k and b bar is equal to 2i plus j plus k. Okay. Now, when these two are the adjacent sides, area of the parallelogram is given by what magnitude of a cross b. So first let us find out what is a cross b. a cross b is equal to determinant of i, j, k. 0, 1, 1, 2, 1, 1. That's equal to i into 1 minus 1 to 0. Minus j into 0 minus 2. Plus k into 0 minus 2. So we get 2j minus 2k. This is a cross b. Now I want its magnitude. Magnitude of a cross b is given by root of uh, root square plus minus 2 whole square. Okay. Root 4 plus root 4. Root 8. That's equal to. 2 root 2, first option. Okay, let's look at the last question. The locus represented by xy plus yz equal to 0 is xy plus yz equal to 0. I'll take y as a common factor. y as a common factor. y into x plus z is equal to 0. When the product is 0, either y is equal to 0 or y is equal to 0 represents the plane, represents the x set. x plus z is equal to 0 that represents another plane. So these two are representing planes. So first of all is ruled out. A pair of perpendicular lines that is ruled out. It cannot be the answer. A pair of, pair of parallel lines that is also ruled out. A pair of parallel planes, a pair of perpendicular planes. Among these two, one of them is the answer. Y is equal to 0 means if I compare this with AX plus BY plus CZ plus D is equal to 0. The direction cosines of the normal, direction ratios of the normal are 0, 1, 0. You can call them as A1, B1, C. And for the second plane, the direction ratios of the normal are 1, 0, 1. This is A1, B1, C1 and this is A2, B2, C2. Now you will observe that they are not proportional. If they are proportional, if the direction cosine, direction ratios are proportional, then they are parallel. Now a1 a2 plus b1 b2 plus c1 c2 will be equal to 0. First theta is equal to 0, therefore theta is equal to 90 degree. They are perpendicular plates. Fourth option is the correct answer.
Okay, students, with this, I will stop this class. Thank you.